Hi, I'm uh, Sean. I'm the on the engineering team. Speaking about engineering stuff. <laughs> hey, that's what's up. Uh, Steel? Hello, I've been here before. I'm Steel. I'm a QA engineer, so I like to break things and, you know, give suggestions on how to fix things. Awesome. Bina? <laughs> I'm Bina. I'm on the engineering team as well. Awesome. Uh, let me see if I can give everybody a microphone. All right, there we go. All right, so uh, we have a couple of things. Oops, I got some echo going on for somebody in the back. It's uh, uh, okay. Could you please oh, use your left hand can. VR menu and mute yourself? All good. All right. So we have a couple of cool announcements today. Um, as you guys have probably seen inside of the Discord channel, uh, we are having the very last day for the Face It contest. Um, so this is basically where you guys can uh, submit facial presets. Uh, beautiful, crazy, uh, interesting, as I've seen from some of the submissions. And, you know, we can include some of those into our editor. So uh, I'll be ending or closing those submissions in probably an hour or so. If you would like to get any last minute submissions in, you are free to do so. But uh, we should be able to have more information on the winners of that soon. Uh, tomorrow, we have an excellent event going on during, uh, well, actually, two events going on. Um, so Marlo will be coming in, and uh, him and some other excellent DJs will be coming in during, I believe, late night Australian time, <laughs> as well as, you know, during uh, late night American time, if I recall correctly. So it should be really interesting, and there should be a time that works for everyone. So definitely come out to that, because it's going to be great. Um, that's what I have to announce from my side. Uh, do we have anything else to announce from the engineering side? Um, so we're probably gonna be pushing out a release here pretty soon, um, uh, with some, some updates. Um, we've been fixing a lot of requests from, from you guys. So, uh, a few things have been fixed. Um, the, the scaling, I'm not sure who requested that, but the, uh, reported that the transforming items when you're using a scaled avatar is fixed and that's going in to the next uh, release. Um, blocking chat from blocked users is going into the next release. I think that was a request from the last uh, product meetup as well. I'm again, not 100% not sure who the request came from, but if you block somebody, you won't see their chat anymore. Um, the uh, We have some chat improvements going in. There is some scripting time improvements going in. So we learned a lot of lessons from the Lost Horizons event, which was really good. And um, we I've been digging into how scripts are run on the server. So I've spent some time uh, working to improve how often scripts run, the amount of time that scripts have to run. So it should improve, I think, uh, overall the 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 speed and reaction time of scripts. So there should be some, some good fixes there. Um, and uh, there is some 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 other uh, more feature-based stuff going on now that we've kind of gotten through Lost Horizons, although we are looking into, you know, just improving things we saw from Lost Horizons. Um, I know that some of the scripters here and some of the experience owners here have reported that they sometimes get bad servers where um, they feel like things aren't running on the server as fast as they should be. We experienced that quite a bit during Lost Horizons as well. And so we've been digging into that. I think um, Zero Cheese and, and Time Master and MedHue and, and those guys have, have reported that issue um, to me in the past. And uh, so we, we actually have found some stuff there and we're working on fixes for it. Um, so those kind of like bad servers should hopefully go away soon. Um, and uh, I'm hoping to have some news on Dynamic sit points. I know that's going to be a question here, so let's try and get in front of it. I hope we have some news on dynamic <laughs> sit points for for next week. Uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll talk about it in Discord since we don't have this meeting next week. But um, there has been some work I've been doing on the side for that. Um, so I'll just get in front of that one. So that that is there is some progress there as well. So those are kind Ooh. of the the current engineering um, uh like priorities from from us like there's some other stuff going on like we're still working on performance there's some performance changes coming and some crash fixes coming um and 
now that the mobile version has been released, we're actually pulling more people back into the client. And so we're going to have a little bit more resources to work on. Um, there's going to be some edit world improvements that we're working on. So edit world is getting a little more low. We're pulling some engineering back onto the client to work on that. And um, the, the the last one is we've got someone dedicated for the next while on audio. So yeah. audio issues, audio crackle, voice crackle, those issues are... Um, are actively being worked on now as well. So a lot of a lot of stuff coming, like not not a ton of stuff in this current release that's coming. Like there's bug fixes in chat and the scaling bug and some of the other things people requested here. Um, but uh, but more stuff on the horizon. That's so exciting, and I'm surprised we didn't hear the uproar of cheers from dynamic sit points because I think that we have some signs out in the audience as well. <laughs> so, Ooh, this is definitely a happy time, Master. Yes. Oh, it's good to hear that. I'll, so thank you for those updates. We also have a bug fix that I would like to point out because this is something that has been plaguing me for a couple of years. Those of you that have gaming mice that refresh, you know, upwards of 500 to 1,000 times per frame because of <laughs> gaming mouse, um, you may have noticed when you're trying to move UI around the, the client or dragging gizmos, stuff like that, it's really jet jittery. That's been fixed. So nice. it's nice and smooth again. That's that's one of my favorite bug fixes that are coming up right now. Yes, yeah, some, some quality life stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. That's great. Uh, is there any other announcements we have from our team? Um, Alex is out today. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else here has has anything. Uh, Coho, is that you? You there? No. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure who's here. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's 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 all I have. So. All right. It's great to see your avatar looking around all perplexed. That avatar is great. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, all right. So I guess this goes ahead and we can go ahead and enter the question and answer uh, section. So if you guys would like to start putting your questions into the chat, uh, I can go ahead and read them off and we can try to um, uh, answer those. All right. So taking a look at here. So CDJ asks, how about automatic cache clearing or something like that? It takes way too much on system drive. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we, we already kind of answered that. That is something that has been on our list for a while. Uh, we've discussed it. it. It's on our list. It hasn't really gone anywhere, but it is something we've looked at. Yeah. Um, we've talked about automatic cache clearing or having just a button in the settings. to So if you feel like it's too big, you can clear it. The problem, you know, it's tough because automatic cache clearing, like, uh, Load times, right? Like the cache is there to decrease load times. So if we start just automatically clearing the cache, then maybe we can do some like time thing where you haven't visited a scene in a long time. We clear that scene out. We don't do any time right now. We just do size cache clearing. Like when thing when this cache gets to a certain size, I think it's pretty big. Um, it'll it'll clear it'll clear out the old entries, but um, maybe there's some kind of button if you want to manually clear it or something like that. But it's a load times is the big reason for it. So. All right, that's good to hear. Uh, the next question we have is, did you learn anything from Lost Horizon Fast? This is from Loki Elliott. And um, at least from our side, I could say absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, you can talk about your lessons learned. I can talk about my lessons learned. I'm, I'm looking at it from more of an engineering perspective, but there were lots of lessons learned on product side and on support side and on, um, you know, just business development side, all this other kind of side. So there's a lot of a lot of lessons learned. So I don't know if you want to talk about the things you learned. I can talk about the things I learned. Sure. I have a more narrow view probably than maybe what people are expecting. But no, no, no. I think it's um great. All of you guys that were greeters and um, you know, moderators for the time, I think that was one of the most successful things that has ever happened and it was actually really appreciated by it all. Uh there's been several articles saying how amazing y'all are and I mean, honestly I have to second it. You guys were great. And I think that that was one of the most unique parts of this festival. Um, so thank you all that were part of the greeter team. And hopefully we'll be able to do something more like that in the future as well for other events. Um, that's the main takeaway. What's up, Bob? I was gonna I was going to echo that too and add that even people who weren't officially part of the greeter team seem to go out of their way to help new users and answer questions when they were asked. And Without um without being asked at all, stepped up and helped the the people that were attending the festival, which is really really cool. Absolutely, I'm proud of you all, and it was really really it made me proud to be the community manager of you guys. Great, they're great 
a great group of people. So thank you all for those that were able to help out. And uh, Wally and I and everyone are very, very thankful. <laughs> thank you to the claps. <laughs> um, Skill, would you please clap? <laughs> Skill, would you like to go ahead and tell your learnings? I was kind of about the same. I, I was mostly just on support for the um, keeping track of the streams, making sure everything stays all synced up. But it was probably the biggest one was the, you know, what uh, Sean already mentioned was the servers. Um, we we did some tracking down to figure out what was going on, which was super helpful. Um, but it was just really cool to see how everyone, like, team together and made those announcements that we needed to restart the restart the servers. Uh, and one of the things that we actually are improving is that uh, we do have a bug fix. It, I guess it's more of a feature improvement where when you get disconnected from a server, instead of being bumped to your home space, we're actually going to start reloading you back into the new server that gets spun up. So you won't have to go back to the Nexus and then go jump back into whatever experience you were in, it should automatically drop you in. So that was a that was a, a nice little thing that came out from, from Lost Horizons, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, that was one too. Yeah. Um Dina, do you do you have anything? Uh, anything new? Well, anything you wanted to add to lessons from Lost Horizon? Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to research a question in chat so I could have an answer ready. I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry to put you on the spot. It's all good. Uh, I thought it was going around. I didn't want to be like, just take anybody's spot. Thank you. I appreciate the <laughs> consideration. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. I mean, on an engineering from an engineering perspective, I mean, there was lots of lessons learned, um, you know, we, we found new, there are lots of new crashes that we have discovered and we, we were working to fix them. Um, performance issues that we're looking at, as, as Steel mentioned, as I talked about before, the, the big, um, the, the server slowdown, server degradation that we were seeing that causes us to do those restarts, we kind of tracked that down, but we were still looking for the appropriate fix for it. Um, and so that should be something that should hopefully, you know, fix, fix some of those, you know, issues across the board for people. Um, you know, there was lots of issues, like we, we discovered stuff about the, the chroma key effect that we're working on. Um, you know, we discovered stuff about, you know, how people interact with things and how we want interactions to work in the future. What, what, what makes a good show? Like we were continually learning about what makes a good show and how we can improve the show, how we can improve ticketing and how we can how we can try and expose ticketing and things so people can have their own shows we've learned we learned a lot about stuff like integrating with other partners there was there was a ton of lessons so um hopefully that'll lead to the goal is to take all of those lessons learned from them and, and lead to improvements in the product so hopefully you'll be seeing that over the next month or so um improvements directly from lost horizon that's great that's great uh, i think overall lost horizons was a huge success and for real, if you guys weren't there, uh, you missed out on something great. So you should definitely come to the next one. It was fantastic. All right. So the next one is from Loki. Uh, when in VR, if I open things like the codex or height adjust, it does not pop up the window in the direction I'm looking, causing me have to look to have to look around for the window. It's really annoying and can lead to physical harm as I get tangled up in my headset cable like something out of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the, uh, the yeah. so the codex in particular, so it's codex, uh, some of the other stuff I think is reactive to where you're looking. See. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we do have a few panels that are reactive to where you're looking, but they'll pop up on like your left or the right side. We try to avoid stacking panels directly in front of you. Um, yeah. But and generally, the, the, yeah, definitely the, the codex in the store in particular have a special kind of panel where it's kind of always center face, like always facing where your avatar is, but we should be able to put that where your head is. So that is, that is a good thing. Maybe we can write that down. Um, we should be able to, to take this panel instead of pointing it where your, it kind of points where your, your physical body is pointing. We should be able to make it so it's like where your head is looking. So that's, that's yeah, not he, too big of a change. Just confirm, so. Yeah, codex. I can get that written up for you right now. Yeah. Too? Sean, like, is that the, not a good idea. I mean, uh, why the codex in the store to be movable panels. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I, don't see I mean, it's something not. we can look at. Yeah. All right. Well, it's good to hear. There's also another question from Loki. Uh, with regards to backpack contents, it is my understanding that you plan to allow world creators the option to dictate what users find in their backpacks when they visit mm -hmm. a world. 
Yeah. Would you also consider an option that to allow the user slash visitor the ability to have one or two of their own personal chosen items in the backpack, which they can res in worlds that perhaps allow for personal backpack items to be res? This could create a new product category on the store for items specifically made for use in backpacks. Mm -hmm. So we, when, we first, when I first implemented the backpack, one of the things I wanted to do was kind of make it so that the users could specify. Basically, adding stuff from people's inventory, and I'm sure some second lifers here can talk about experiences with this, but allowing people to put stuff into the world directly from people's inventory has some implications around briefing and, and performance and, and other stuff. Um, now, if we had our own category for it where we like, kind of did more um, like asset checks on the thing that you're spawning. It's like, it seems to be a certain number of things. It can't be the, too big. It can't be like allowing, doing those kind of checks might allow us to have this. What I was originally thinking would be a good use case maybe would be have kind of like wild worlds where it's like, yeah, you can spawn anything you want from your inventory. But if you go there, people are going to spawn anything they want from their inventory. So if someone spawns something that's the size of this room and we're all in, it's weird stuff's going to happen. <laughs> You know, um, so there is like this, this triangle. kind of, yeah, some of this 10 million triangles, something that's like gray goo, where it's like, it spawns something every, this thing spawns itself twice. So, and then every, each of those spawn themselves twice and each of them spawn themselves. So like uh, gray goo type stuff, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of implications for that. Um, I thought uh, one thing I thought about was like, yeah, maybe we should have these kind of wild worlds that, you know, it says up front, like people can do, can spawn stuff, whatever they want here. Um, and you're kind of entering your own risk. Uh, you know, maybe that's a possibility in the future. Um, definitely working on the backpack to allow for scene creators to control their stuff. And it's certainly possible that we then take that to, you go, you can have your own inventory, which would be, I think, really awesome because it, it, it opens up all kinds of possibilities. Um, so, uh, I think that would be good. Um, yeah, so that backpack stuff, hopefully coming soon. Um, trying to get trying to get to it. I'm trying to get to it. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to be really great. I, I get a lot of push from, from the business side, too, because they really wanted for concerts and stuff to um, have, have, you know, custom, custom backpack items for that particular concert. So, um, yeah. Hopefully All that answers the question. Here. For sure. Uh, the next question is from Timey. After the last events, has anyone on the team thought about or doing any research into why retention is so low slash non-existent as this is a major issue? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we've seen some really nice numbers after Lost Horizon as well. Um, and we're just going to keep on going up, definitely looking into it. And, you know, uh, if you have any thoughts, we'd love to hear them. So uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> if anyone else has any other uh, things to add, feel free. Or uh, we can hop to the next one. All right. So Zero says, can we get a UI makeover for both desktop and VR? Exclamation mark, question mark. Woo! <laughs> Dina, if you want to talk to that at all. I mean, the unfortunate reality choices, is the size of our least. staff right now. Color yeah. choices. Just to change Color the choices. Blue. Yeah. I mean, change I the gray to blue or change the blue to something else? Change, yeah. Just change, like, you know, have a little drop down. Oh, I want this theme. Like, change oh, the okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the short term, some of the things I think we're looking at, at fixing are the chat and people panels, especially addressing the, the as we all know, the text size in chat. Um, before the changeover to Wookiee, we did have plans to, re like, overhaul the UI, but... Uh, the shift, you know, affected us in many ways. So we're we're still hoping we can get there, but we're going to have to take baby steps, unfortunately, yeah. not like a big sweeping overhaul. Yeah, and we've taken some steps, right, to to address like the the atlas and the um, the store to make those a little more appealing, more colorful, um, less gray. So there's definitely some motion there, um, and we'd like to keep continuing to to, uh, to improve. So. All right. That's good to hear. Uh, sorry, Evo, I did not mean to skip your question. It just uh, glossed over it with my eyes. 
So uh, Evo asks, is it possible to enable WebGL in Sansar's embedded browser? This would allow us to render the 3D objects for VR users using the stereoscopic shader that allows potentially more advanced shaders on objects in the browser than what Sansar provides. The WebGL feature in the in-world browser currently seems to be disabled. So I, that's the question I was researching um, when I got caught off guard. Uh, I was asking the <laughs> engineer who implemented CEF. Uh, he says that he thinks it's enabled. So if you've tested and found it, it's not enabled, I will tell him. Um, but he also said he can't imagine what fits it will make your GPU go through. So it's kind of like, even if it were enabled, it probably would really cause some serious performance issues. But that's for you to figure out, I assume. Um, Eva, if you want to contact me on the side, if you have tried it and it's not working, I can follow up with uh, you and the engineer. Thanks. Be cool. Would be cool. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see. Daisy Gator asks, do we know what happened at the end of Fatboy Slim's set? It was great, but seemed to go pear-shaped at the end. Um, I'm not sure. Does anyone know? We had a well, like a couple of things like that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, like we 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 were having a lot of server um, performance issues across the the across the across the festival. Um, we were having a lot of performance issues, server performance in particular, and that was degrading over time so like the longer the show went on that's why we were constantly restarting the servers um that's why we were restarting the servers kind of every hour um and that's what we're trying to fix so if that's if that was maybe the cause like things like people popping around things like uh you know um maybe i'm not sure exactly what you mean by peer show. i i didn't ex i'm not sure what people were experiencing i don't know if i caught the end of the show um i was working on, on some issues at the time um, but, uh, I know that that was happening, so. Well, it's good to know. And there's a lot of learnings, um, you know, for preparing for next time. Uh, let's see. The very next one we have is from Jeka. How far are we with implementing the last panels to remember their last use settings on slash off states, especially chat and people panels? As far as I remember, there were talks of a change in those two panels behavior slash functionality, but that never happened. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It, I, I think they're asking if um, you close out a window if it'll remember it's closed. Oh. Uh, do you guys yeah. happen to know this? Um, yeah. Uh, which you gotta, huh? Yeah, which window is specifically? Because I think each one is configured individually, right? I think uh, chat. The, the people's panel, when you go into lookbook and come back, it's gone. You have mm -hmm. to open it again. I see. Okay. Point. I'll make a note of that. that yeah. Be a quick fix. I can, yeah. I can look at. Yeah, and the chat and people tools, huh? I think it resets so however you scaled it to. Oh, okay. It yeah, we just need to do the remember me kind of the remember yeah. panel stuff on it. Mm -hmm. um, I know they they do remember position. I always have mine set to a different position at least, and that's. Well, I guess it's not yeah. remembering the the uh, scale. Um, okay. Yeah, those two panels, chat and people are on the docket to get kind of a, a major overhaul. So most likely some sort of com combining of them um, to make yeah, them... Because I remember it was kind of combined. It had uh, the chat panel had yeah. a button to the people's uh, panel. Yeah, that, so... It uh, was taken away at some point. Yeah, it was split apart at some point, and we're looking at doing kind of a, a different combination on the back end. We're taking some inspiration from, from Discord and some other... Um, some other chat apps and we're looking at doing pulling some of those ideas in and so um there is a alex is kind of spearheading a um he's not here today but he's kind of spearheading a uh, a major overhaul of those two panels in particular and like i said most likely combining them in some way awesome yeah thank you very much all right so uh we have a lot of more questions but we only have four minutes left so i'm gonna try to get through these Okay. Uh, question. Rapid question. Fire. Lightning yes. round. <laughs> All right. This is from Cindy. Is it possible to have more clothing slots in the lookbook when you use shoes, makeup, and nail paint? Then you have two slots free for clothes. Um, I think they're asking for more slots. The the problem with that is the more uh -huh. slots we add, the more complex the avatars become, which mm. can lower the experience. 
Uh, yeah, we, we, we've talked about, I know when, when Kara was still here, we talked a lot about having like a score where it's like you can have, instead of having slots, you have a score for your avatar where it's like you have this many, you have a, a, a budget and you have this many polygons, you have this many textures. Right now we've kind of implemented that budget by controlling the number of slots. But if we switch to a different budget system where it's like, we're just trying to keep complexity down and especially texture use down because those are two things that, really affect other people's performance. That's the one thing with the avatar is it affects other people's enjoyment of the product. So that's why we've kept that low. Now, maybe we can talk about maybe adding one more slot won't be such a such a big deal for in the short term. Um, uh, so maybe we do that. Um, but we can we can write that down. Maybe we can follow up the next meeting about it. But it is something that we can, you know, adding another slot is, is changing a number. But it is the, the reason we have it is for these kind of those slots affect other people's performance. So we're trying to, to make it a good experience for everyone. So. Awesome. Thimble Munch asks, any plans to add sa gifting Sansar dollars to the API in the future? Uh, we we do have that, no? There's no, script API. script API, I assume. Oh, okay. By um, yeah, that would be cool. I think we're, we're looking at this like concept of tipping and tipping may come with a script API component because we want you guys to make money from your scenes. We want to make it easier. You don't have to like sell rocks um, in your scenes. It's just to do tipping when we should just make that a first, uh, a first level, a top level thing. So tipping, gifting kind of same concept, but tipping is, is more likely to get an API. I guess it's kind of the same thing, but if you want to put it in your scenes, you can get money for your scene. So you can get tips for your scene or tips for your performance. That's where we're going, I think. So Awesome. All right, so Virtual Decadence on Twitch asks, are there any news regarding content creators and that 65% fee for marketplace sales? Uh, I think it's 62, but uh, still. <laughs> uh, do we have any news regarding that? I do not. That's more of a product question. Hopefully Bowden or maybe we can get somebody to come in next time that's more of an expert on that. I know it's asked every product meetup, but uh, we don't have that person here this week. Um, people are out this week and stuff like that. All right. Well, we, I will make sure that that person is here next week. I will Thank see you. if Thank you. Thank you. If Bowden or Julia is here. I think Bowden was supposed to talk about it the next time. Didn't we say that? All right. Next next time, next product meetup, come. Yes. And we will talk about it. Can you put it on the agenda and Can send you? an email? Thank you. I'll send an email after this meeting. Um, so. Sounds great. Um, all right. So we are out of time, but I will ask one more question real quick because we have uh, a good amount more, but um, Evo Av asked related to the WebGL question, it also seems web audio API is also disabled. Can you enable that as well? This would allow to create synthesizers and audio, other audio effects that come from the browser. If you do, then also allow us to autoplay since we cannot interact with the page and Chrome disables the autoplay by default when there's no interaction. Some ideas that come to mind from this, uh, text-to-speech and translation apps and world MIDI players and other pretty cool use cases. Well, autoplay, as you said, is is handled by Chrome, and I deal with this all the time uh, in my day-to-day -day life that you have to click the page to start it, unfortunately. So uh, I could share some JavaScript workarounds if you're hosting your own pages. Unfortunately, if you're not hosting your own pages, it's just it's a Chromium drawback. Um, we were talking about sharing some of our video, uh, like media surface tricks that we use publicly, um, and I'll see if I can pull that together. Uh, for people and put it on our scripting um, GitHub. But unfortunately, that click to play part is a Chromium thing. Uh, again, with the audio, I'll ask the same engineer about it. Uh, he thinks maybe there might need to be some sort of flag configurations, and I think we, we may just have to look into that a little deeper. But I'm, that's stuff that interests me, Evo, so I definitely would like to look into it more. All right, so thank you guys for all coming. Sorry if we were unable to get to your question. Um, we will definitely try to get to them next time. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys very, very soon. And hopefully we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you all for attending. Um, all right, thank you guys. Woo! Thank you. Fortunately, I gotta run. Yeah, I gotta go too. All right, bye Twitch. Bye guys, so, bye Twitch. Thanks everyone. Bye everybody. Bye. Yeah. bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Cool, see ya. Off the air.